Hello, I'm Jeffrey Carpenter. I'm the Senior Director of Incident Response Consulting here at SecureWorks. And I'm also joined by my colleague and good personal friend, Jake Dorval, who is the Director of our SecureWorks Adversary Group. Uh, welcome, Jake. Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate the time here today. Super excited to be here with you. I tremendously value this partnership. I'm looking forward to this talk. Great. Thanks. Uh, so today, Jake and I are going to show you how incident response and technical testing feed into the cycle of understanding about threats and help us protect our customers. Uh, so we're going to do over the next 20 minutes, do that by talking through two customer emergencies that we've worked on, uh, that we've worked on this year. And Jake and I are doing this together uh, because uh, we, that's how we do our normal day to day work. We work together. Our teams work together. Um, when it comes to us protecting customers, it's Jake's team and my team work team working side by side uh, to help our help our customers. So I mentioned we're going to cover two customer incidents. Uh, we're going to call them customer A and customer B very creatively, but they are real customers who have had emergencies this year that we have uh, that we that we've worked on. And these uh, cases will these incidents will illustrate uh, how the, our two teams work together and how our teams both fuel our platform as well as utilize our platform in the work that we do. So we're gonna get started on the first story. And this first story is a very similar to what many customers have faced this year and many people have, have faced. It's about ransomware. And this particular case starts on a Monday morning at 1 a.m. earlier this year. And this customer, who is a global manufacturing company, uh, they became the victim of ransomware. And as I mentioned, that's a pretty common occurrence uh, these days. Uh, we now have about 25% of our engagements that we work on in emergency IR are ransomware engagements. And that's something that has continued to increase over the past couple of years. In addition to that increasing, we're also seeing the adversaries changing their tactics because they're, for them, it's, it's a business for them also. Their business is to try to get uh, their their customers to pay uh, the ransom, and they change their tactics continuously to increase the likelihood that their victims, their customers, are going to uh, to, to to pay the pay the ransom. And so, in this particular case, this customer, in the first three days that the ransomware went through their their network, they ended up having five thousand hosts across their organization. Uh, encrypted by the ransomware, and that ransomware encryption paralyzed the operations of the company. They, they were pretty much ground to a halt at that point. Now, this customer is not alone. Uh, this is a real, actual customer example, but many other customers like this find themselves in this position. Um, what this customer ended up doing is after five days, they called enough's enough. They, they picked up the phone, and they reached out to the SecureWorks Incident Response Hotline. Um, when they reach out to the SecureWorks Incident Response Hotline, they're actually reaching out to a very broad and uh, deep bench of expertise on our teams. And that's really where Jeffrey and I's partnership comes together and shines for our customers to provide significant value for them. Part of what makes SecureWorks unique is that we, when we respond to emergency incident response engagements, we bring different perspectives from the offensive side of the house, the defensive side of the house, the research side of the house. And so as you can see here on the defensive side of the house, there's over a hundred incident responders, security analysts, and security researchers on staff. On the offensive side of the house, which is my group, I've got over 110 fully dedicated penetration testers around the world where all they do every day, every week is adversary activity against our customers. We're trying to attack them. So when we respond to our customers' engagements on, a, on an emergency situation like this customer, when we come to those engagements, we bring tremendous value and insights to that throughout our partnership. Once a customer reaches out to the SecureWorks Incident Response Hotline, it basically triggers our response procedures. And so that's where we start formulating a team. And when we formulate a team, we bring experts from all of those different disciplines into that emergency incident response engagement. So a customer calls us just like customer A right here. 
we, we grabbed a resource from the incident response team. We paired them up with resources from the adversary group, as well as researchers from the counter threat unit or CTU where all of the intelligence analysis is done. And we jointly responded to this customer engagement. Now to put it into perspective, that is just, that's one customer engagement. To put it in perspective, we do over uh, almost 3000 engagements every single year across both of our teams. Um, this brings us a tremendous amount of experience that we can bring to our customers where we see all kinds of different things. We know what the adversary is going to do for their next step. We know what they have done elsewhere with other customers, and it allows us to respond faster and help our customers out during these situations. So while this is much more broad and it shows you the number of engagements that we do across our two teams, I want to bring it back to this one customer example, customer A, because it's very important about how we responded to their incident. Okay, so when we, we got the team assembled, we're now ready to, to work with this particular customer, customer A. And one of the first things we want to do is kind of get a, a survey of what is actually happening and you know what is happening where on their, their network. So we need to understand what machines have been impacted, which are not impacted. Where is the adversary operating? Are there other adversaries? that are also operating on the network. And so one of the best ways for us to do that is deploy our own endpoint agent, which gives us both a look at the historical activities that occurred on computers that are on the network, as well as setting up for active monitoring for things that happen in the future on the, the machines. And we wanna kind of get a look across the entire uh, IT estate on, on what is happening to help them develop the plans for recovering from the engagement. One of the other things we want to try and do is see, do we know who the adversary is? Can we identify who they are so that we can understand their motivations? So for example, are they uh, are they just doing ransomware to, to get the, the money? They encrypted the, the data, but they didn't take anything. Or do they actually, is their MO that they actually have taken information and may potentially threaten to expose that information? And that can help the customer prepare for what might still be coming. So it may be that that adversary takes information and threatens to publish it, but hasn't said that yet. And But the customer, if they know that that's the MO, they can begin to prepare for that potential. And so we do that by, we, we look at uh, organizations, criminal and nation state organizations around the world that we consider to be threat groups. And we look at what are the MOs, what do they do, how do they do it, what are they targeting? That helps us understand uh, in, in, in these cases uh, more about what might be coming and what they might have done. And you compare that up with the technical information that we can see on the computers about what they did. So in this particular case, that allowed us to identify that the adversary was Gold Southfield, uh, which is a financially related criminal uh, group. They're mostly interested in getting money. They're not as much interested in stealing intellectual property or other types of, uh, of things. And uh, this actual uh, blurb about uh, Gold Southfield is actually from our public website. We've published information on our public website about many of the threat groups that we monitor, including specific detailed threat analysis or blog entries that we have posted, uh, posted about these. So now that we have an idea of what the MO is and what they may have been targeting, uh, we can begin a three-step process for helping the company get back get back in business. Uh, the first step, surveying the network, understanding what's happening across the across the network, identifying which machines have been encrypted, which ones um, uh, have not been encrypted, which ones have adversarial activity, and then begin the cleanup process, allowing the company to bring services back online and do that in a way that minimizes the potential that that adversary or some other adversary can get back into the network. And so it's important for us to make sure that the network is heavily instrumented to, uh, to be able to see exactly what's happening on the network as they're bringing things back online. And it's important to be testing the infrastructure to see as we're bringing things back online, have we created any uh, vulnerabilities in doing that. In many of these cases, the IT staff is under significant pressure. They have to do work quickly. They're under pressure from management, get these things back up online. And when you're under that kind of pressure, it's quite frequently the case that you make a mistake 
when you're trying to bring things back online. So testing your infrastructure, testing the changes that you make to make sure you haven't made a mistake becomes very, uh, very important. You're absolutely spot on, Jeff. Uh, that third phase around testing things, it, it, it can't be stated how important that is for our customers. But even during that initial emergency incident response, it's so important there and so critical there too. Um, it might sound weird, but bringing the adversary along with you during emergency incident response, it provides you such tremendous insight into what's happening. So for example, what we typically do and, and we do often on our engagements is we bring along the adversary group and it helps identify patient zero significantly faster than we would otherwise. And why is that? because we're a team of hackers. We can look at an organization that's been compromised and we can quickly understand where would we go and attack them? Where would we compromise them? Nine times out of 10, it's almost always the same thing that, that compromised them. So we were able to uncover it, point, point the incident responders that way, go look for it. Sure enough, it's right there. Um, but there's other things that we do, right? You gotta make sure that you're looking for the additional vulnerabilities that could be in that environment and making sure that you know about that. That way you can reduce that game of whack-a-mole that always happens. So making sure that those uh, attackers don't get back in. And when we do our engagements on the offensive side, when we partner up with IR, we can categorize those into a handful of different areas. Really the main, the main categories are external testing, basically can I compromise the customer from the internet? Internal testing, okay, so I've compromised the customer, now what can I do? Where can I pivot? Which accounts can I escalate to? How many systems can I compromise? What data can I access? All of those questions come in there. Then there's password cracking where, you, uh, you know, adversaries all day long, they're constantly using and compromising passwords and credentials and grabbing hashes and cracking those. We do the same thing here. We've got GPU accelerated hash cracking boxes that the same thing as nation states do. If we can get an ntds.dit file, we can crack, you know, a good, good portion of those passwords and show what an adversary could do in the environment. And then of course, on the exercise front, we've got purple team exercises that we do alongside the incident response team with and uh, functional training exercises as well. Now that starts dabbling into the proactive space, which is really important because on the proactive piece, we also do targeted threat hunts where we leverage the adversary group to inform that threat hunt. Basically, we work together on those engagements as well to take a look at the customer's environment and provide info to the threat hunters of where should you really prioritize your time and effort? Where should you focus your threat hunt? Where is the most risk for the customer and, the, and for that organization? A lot of these are proactive examples of how we work together, but one specifically that I wanna call out is ransomware. We do ransomware preparedness assessments all the time where basically we help an organization just like customer A um, we, we help them all the time where we're trying to understand, can they see an attacker before they deploy ransomware? Can they prevent the attacker from deploying ransomware? Can they stop them? Um, and in this example on the left, you're seeing a report. It's an actual customer report that's redacted where you can see how many systems we were able to compromise, how fast we were able to compromise those systems, where we were able to run a benign ransomware. And you can tell it's a, it's a global spread that we had. We had full control. If that was an actual ransomware attack, the customer didn't see us. They didn't stop us. At that point, we would have had full control over the network. Okay, now we're kind of wrapping up the first uh, customer's uh, incident. We wanted to take a look, you know, we collect a lot of information. We learn a lot of things in engagements. Uh, and we, obviously you're using that to help that customer get out of their, their situation. But what else do we do with that information? Well, we take what we learn from our incident response and our technical testing engagements, and we apply that to our platform so that we're able to help other customers who may be in a similar, uh, in a similar situation. So we specifically take the learnings that we have on what the adversaries are doing, what tactics they're using, how they're working. We develop countermeasures to counter those tactics, uh, and then we apply it to the platform. And then it's available to help protect our other customers. And the things that we learn in IR and technical testing is some of the best intelligence uh, that the company that the company collects because uh, our our responders and testers are right on the front lines of what is actually uh, actually happening. You're absolutely spot on, Jeffrey. So in that example, that's a customer facing example. Customer A, they had an emergency incident, we got engaged, we helped them out, and we took the learnings from that and put it into the platform. 
What I'm describing on this page here is we also do this in controlled lab environments as well. My team as offensive security professionals, we are regularly attacking lab environments that are instrumented with our software to make sure that we're able to keep up with the latest and greatest threats. That if there's vulnerabilities out there and adversaries are exploiting them, that we can detect that and we can respond to that. So we are doing this on a regular basis and we are seeing positive output come from this where at our customers, we are getting actual true positives from the improvements that we're making from this testing. So it's not only just in the customer engagements that we do, we also do it in this lab environment as well. Okay, Jake, so now we're ready to get to the second customer uh, engagement, customer B, and as you might suspect, this is also a ransomware uh, situation, but it ends up a little differently than the, uh, than the first one. In this case, this customer is uh, a SecureWorks MDR customer, and we start with, with some suspicious observations of, of activity that's occurring on their network. And it started with the adversary uh, compromising the, the customer uh, through a firewall vulnerability. They were able to get into uh, the customer's network and they began performing a series of, of actions which are detected by our platform that as activities that uh, are indicators that perhaps a ransomware uh, engagement is about to occur, that ransomware might be about to be deployed. So they sound the uh, alarm and uh, get our incident responders uh, activated uh, in, in this incident. We're able to quickly get in and say, you see, yes, there is an adversary uh, and they are conducting activities which are a precursor to ransomware. So it's really important to, to act quickly to get that activity stopped before the ransomware is deployed. Oh, by the way, it appears that this group is also uh, Gold Southfield. And uh, fortunately, we know all about Gold Southfield because we had customer A's uh, engagement. And fortunately, in this case, for this company, we were able to stop the activity of, by the adversary before the ransomware was deployed. And so that saved this customer probably millions of dollars in recovery costs and lost business by having the ransomware stopped before it was uh, before it was deployed. A much, much happier ending for that customer, right? Um, yeah, that differentiated approach that we're talking about where we're leveraging multiple different teams to respond to these incidents and then also proactively help our customers, that's really what we're after. We wanna help protect our customers from the adversary as fast as we possibly can, leveraging the intelligence that we get from all of our engagements. Um, throughout these engagements and the approach that we bring, we regularly see uh, tremendous value going to our customers, which provides a very strong customer experience, a very, very positive customer experience. And Jeffrey's a nice team, jokingly and internally here at SecureWorks, we regularly have a friendly competition about who can achieve the highest NPS scores within the entire company. We see a very positive reaction to this approach. But I want to bring it back to the circle. So we talked about two different customers. We bring the, we brought this full circle. We did the emergency IR side. We brought the proactive into it. But I want to remind you that these are just two examples. We also do this. Again, we do nearly 3,000 engagements every single year between our two teams. And we do this on a regular, ongoing basis. It's critically important for us, and it's part of what makes us differentiated and unique here in the way that we have our teams working together. Not a lot of the competition out there has teams like us that are seamlessly integrated on response engagements like this. For now, I, I thank you very much for giving us your attention during this talk. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.